Hi, Carl again from subsufficienthub.com and we're out on a coastal walk today and we've come across one of the best forageable plants you will ever find. It's over here, just there in the background and it's called sea beet. It's currently still in the middle of the pandemic. There's a, a cruise ship just parked up there, not able to dock, which is quite unusual here, but uh, we're parked in the distance there where you see those buildings. So we've walked a, a fair distance along the shoreline here to get away from all the people. And I'm glad we did. It's one of the best forageable items you're ever going to get for lots of different reasons. Flavor being chief among them. So if you're a fan of spinach, and if you're into foraging, I don't really see how you can't be a fan of spinach because a lot of the things we forage for are very similar tasting if we're lucky. Um, but this one is the other way around. This one is like spinach plus. It's great. It's an absolutely great plant. Every part of it is edible, including the root. But be aware if you're not on your own property or wherever you are, you need the landowner's permission to dig up the root. Um, that's, that's the law in the UK. So we won't be digging up the root and we won't be taking the whole plant. We'll be taking enough for a meal for this evening. But as I said, you can eat the whole plant. Now, I like this section here. Let me just cut a piece off. So this section here is probably my favorite bit and we'll just lightly cook that for a couple of minutes. You can boil it, fry it, saute it, um, anything that's gonna keep the moisture in it and that for a couple of minutes is just gorgeous. We're gonna also take some leaves. We're gonna cook, um, cook two bits of the plant different ways. So we're gonna show you how to do that. Another reason why it's such a great plant is because it's actually available all year round. I personally don't come and find it in the deep winter because I think that the plant needs to get through that period on its own and I like to leave it to do its thing. But you can actually find enough to make a good meal at any time. Now this here, is the ancestor of so many plants that we have growing in our gardens for food, like beetroot, um, sugar beet. Also, perpetual spinach is a direct descendant of this plant. So it's good stock. So in terms of identification, you've got these leaves, which when they're quite young, they're quite rounded. And then as they get older, they get more slightly more straggly looking around the outside. They're very glossy. They tend to get less glossy as they get older, but this specimen seems to be pretty glossy all over. You quite often find it with some of that purple marking. In fact, there's another plant just over here I'll show you. This is also sea beet, and as you can see, it looks quite different. We've got almost entirely purple stems. but it is the same plant. And again, over here, here we've got one without any purple on, just green. But they're all sea beet. And do find a couple of other sources so that you can find different pictures of the sea beet that look slightly differently. But once you've become familiar with it, it's a really safe plant to forage for. There's not a lot you're going to find. In fact, there's nothing you're gonna find that looks like it that's dangerous. So. It's a really good, safe forageable. So it's one of the reasons why, you know, it's one of my top plants. It's, it's easy to identify. It's great to taste. It's abundant. It's available almost all year round. Well, it is available all year round and it grows almost everywhere. So in terms of habitat, it's coastal sites, but not on the water, just at the uh, edge of the shoreline. And it will grow on anything. It, you'll find it growing in sand, in pebbles, on rocks, on soil as we have here or even cracks in walls. So it's abundant, easy to forage, easy to find. Get out there and find some. Back home, this is what I managed to get. And we're gonna cook just this small amount here, which is a few of the leaves and a few of the seed heads, which are delicious. We're gonna cook them, if you have a look in the pan here, on a medium heat, just in some butter to wilt them down for 
two or three minutes. Now, if you're cooking larger leaves, anything larger than that one, you might want to strip out that middle vein because they can stay quite tough. But I'm gonna just cook this for a couple of minutes now and then we'll try a bit. Okay, so we're gonna pull it out now. Realistically, it's probably had three or four minutes in there on, as I say, a medium heat. It does cook down to probably half what you put in the pan. But now, the moment of truth, the taste test. I'm going to separate out the leaves from the seed heads, but they're both going to be delicious. And I'm going to start here. So this is uh, one of the pieces with the seed heads, the whole tip, including all the leaves and stuff around it. Mmm. I'll tell you what, cooked in butter, it's divine. My daughter's just had some. She doesn't want to be in the video, but she enjoyed it. I'm going to say a massive thumbs up. It is quite salty, so bear that in mind. If you're serving it in a dish, you might not need to add as much salt as you usually do, but... Taste-wise, absolutely fantastic. My wife enjoyed it, my daughter enjoyed it, and they're not the most open to my foraged leaves, as they as they say, oh my goodness, you always make me taste your leaves. So, uh, you know, bear that in mind, they enjoyed it. So, definitely get out there, get yourself some, and see you on the next one. If you find these videos valuable, there's several ways you can support them. The easiest ways are to subscribe to our channel, to like this video, leave a comment down below. You can also find us in your podcast provider, wherever you get your podcast, search for Self Sufficient Hub and the podcast will be available there for you to subscribe to. You can also find us on Patreon if you want to make a financial monthly contribution to the show, we would be absolutely delighted and that's patreon.com forward slash Self Sufficient Hub. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers. If you find these videos valuable, there's several ways you can support them. The easiest of one... <laughs>